all right? Is that loud enough? Okay. I have my mom's voice. So I don't speak very loud. <laughs> okay. Cool. Welcome in. This is on climbers and covers today. Um, so I won't be really going over hard goods. I'm just going to go over plants today. Um, but I brought some things for some issues that are happening right now that are really bad. So I just wanted to bring them up so you guys can be aware. So I'm going to start with that, and then I'll just go into these plants here. Uh, do shade, full sun. I'm going to go over everything. Um, and then how to take care of them as well. So if you have any questions at any point, just raise your hand. I'll answer you, you guys are a pretty small class. So we have some time. It's going to be about 45 minutes or so for this class. So my parents are up at the lake today. So they left me with this job, which I do. I'm learning classes. This has been fun for me to kind of process and do, uh, especially these kinds of classes, because they're just fun. Hard goods are boring, and I hate talking about it. <laughs> So to start with, I've had at least five people this week have really bad grubs, especially under their evergreen trees. Those big guys, big spruces, pines, not really the ponderosas, but everything else. Um, if it suddenly started failing on you or it's weepy or it's just looking weird, um, it's either going to be water or I really check for grubs. Um, they killed out at least three trees this year, grown Austrians, grown spruces. So theirs was really bad. Their wet winter and a cool spring, it just kind of caused grubs to come about. So you gotta, if it's in a lawn, check six, six inches down, you'll find them. If it's under a tree, you gotta go about a foot down to two feet right under that base of that, that root ball. Um, and you'll see grubs if you have them. So just check for that if anything weird's happening. I just want to bring, and this will be the product to use to kill it. You sprinkle it down on the ground, water it in, and it just goes right to those grubs and kills them out. If you have them in a vegetable bed or, or a potting bed, this right here, veg and ornamental, is an organic or all natural version in your vegetable bed, so it will not get into your fruit or anything like that. Under fruit trees, uh, grapevines, things like that. This will be great. So that was just a big problem. So that was the main one. So then I want to introduce a cool new plant we got this year, like last week. It's not anything to do with this class, but I like new stuff because everything tends to be the same. I thought I'd bring this in. This is a dwarf scotch pine. So it gets six by six, so just more upright. Yeah, six by six, a nice big kind of tree shrub. I've got one growing in a pot right now. I decided to take one and grow it out and see how it does. Um, so it starts out like this and then eventually just grows out and grows wide. So no trimming, you can, just does its own thing, light watering. Uh, once it's established, maybe like twice a month or so, summer, maybe once a week. So just a new plant, really cool if you want more of a smaller size tree, because there's not many here that do well. Um, full sun, really bug resistant, deer resistant, all that stuff. Nothing's going to touch this. Dwarf scotch pine. So, just thought I'd bring that up. Okay, so I'm just gonna start at the end, work my way over. Just kind of shaded stuff, and then I'll go into like full sun stuff. Let's start with the vines. So this is, I'm pretty sure everyone knows, Boston Ivy. Yep, Boston Ivy. Grows better in the shade to maybe partial shade, um, like under a pine tree or something like that. Um, we had one growing under a big willow. Willow got cut down. It lasted about two seasons and then it died out in the sun because it got right into full sun. So best to get shade. Turns a really pretty orangey red color in the fall. Um, so it'll just turn bright red, bright orange. Does this the rest of the year. Grows pretty fast. I mean, within a season, you'll probably get a good three, four feet of it. Grows really fast. Um, no animal resistant, nothing touches this. The only thing I've seen on these guys, bug wise, sometimes they could possibly get spider mite. That's all I've seen, that's a little webbing stuff. You won't see a spider, you'll just see webbing. Um, it'll be in splotches, so it'll create weird brown spots. Yeah? So if you're going up a wall, trellis is best. It can do a block wall, but you might need to train it a little bit until it starts rooting up that wall. Um, and it can also be a ground cover. If you just take the stake out and kind of train it out, it can be a ground cover as well. So either one. Um, pretty moderate water, not super drought resistant, but not doesn't need water every day. Kind of maybe like twice, three times a week or so, if that. 
Um, so this is just a really hardy shade plant. Yeah. Yeah, so you're gonna get um, indoor outdoor spray. That's kind of our hardiest spray for anything and everything. If you wanna go organic, triple action will work just as good. Uh, you might need to do it a couple of times because they're kind of aggressive some years. Like this year, they've been really aggressive, spider mite. So just keep an eye out for it. Yeah. And this goes with any ivy, any, the green showers ivy, uh, Boston, and there's one more. Any of those ivies, shade. They need shade or partial, like sprinkled sunlight. You want something a little prettier. This guy is a clematis. So they can handle a little bit more sun, maybe morning sun till like 11. You keep their roots shaded. They can go a lot longer in the sun. They just need shaded roots. The tops can handle that sunlight we've got here. Um, but partial, partial sun. Gets this beautiful, obviously it's not blooming now, beautiful pink bright star flower. There's tons of different colors of them. Have more in the spring. But this is a solid, either trellis up or on the ground, either way. You got a lot of traffic in your area, you're, got, you're gonna be walking on it, probably trellis it up because it's very fragile in terms of don't be walking on it and everything. Same if you got deer, javelina coming through, you're gonna wanna train this guy up. Um, not really insects, maybe some aphids when it flowers, just keep an eye on it, but I didn't see anything on it this year. So they're pretty hardy. Uh, deer, might go after the flowers if they're really desperate. They usually tend to not want to take over this plant, eat it or anything. So just keep that in mind. Some years they might might go for it. And then they get these cool little pom-pom things once they're done flowering. So, so javelina are tricky. Javelina don't, they don't really follow the list. One herd will eat this, one herd will eat that. So we have a list that is, it is, Javelina proof, but if you've got grubs or anything, anything under that root ball, they're gonna eat it. This, they're gonna go for it, they're gonna rip it out and not care about you or your, your, your motions or anything, they're just gonna rip it out. And then you'll see remnants of it. It's super fun like that. So it is resistant. This is as well. If you got grubs or anything, they're gonna go for it. It's kind of per herd what they do. This guy is kind of another, it's a variegated Virginia creeper. Very good one. So it gets little berries in the fall once it's finished blooming and stuff. Um, I would say partial shade to maybe not exact full sun, but partial shade. Under pines, this does great. Any of those tall guys, it's almost a native here. Not the very good kind, but the normal kind, which I have. So this is the normal variety you see everywhere. Virginia creeper turns bright red in the fall. This guy just stays green with the variegation, bright red in the fall. You start, it's starting to get some color on it, not much right now. Both get berries. This guy is more native. I was living in one of those houses over there. I was planting some hookah out. My dog ripped it out, it died. For some reason I found a tube thing and it started growing and it was a native uh, Virginia creeper. Didn't know it was there, it was underground forever and it just started growing. So they grow well. Yes, this is full sun, shade, whatever. This can do anything. Um, very, it's animal resistant, bug resistant. So this is a great plant for here. Once it's established, very little water because they can handle themselves. Uh, so great, again, under pines, anything under tall trees, it will just take over and great. And trail up, I think at the Yavapai College, they have this on that wall. You see it in the, in the autumn time, it goes bright orange. Okay, so it goes up well. Kind of, you don't really need to train it either. This one kind of takes care of itself. That or you can go along the ground. However you guys want to do that. So uh-huh, yep, trellises. Yeah, it won't be too heavy. Yes, birds eat the berries. You don't need to eat them. They're not that great tasting. Um, I can't remember if you can eat them or not, so just don't. But the birds, they love them. If you want to feed nature, do that. I pulled two of these, look at me. <laughs> So that's kind of your shade climbers um, and then some sun. The rest of these guys are all going to be full sun. Uh, they can handle some shade. We'll get into that. I'll come back to that. So I don't know if you guys have been seeing, Ken's been marketing this probably a lot right now because I've had a lot of people in for this stuff. 
These are Japanese honeysuckle. That's that white flowered, very fragrant smelling one you see everywhere. And this is the purple Japanese honeysuckle. So this guy's the most evergreen vine you can find. It's kind of a semi evergreen. If you get really cold, it might take it out the leaves. But usually mine staying green for years. So full sun, drought tolerant once it's established. Up a wall, you might have to train it a little bit because they want to go floppy limbs and stuff. Just train it up. If you want to make it a bush, some people like it as a bush. You just take the stakes out. It'll just bush itself up and you can do that or you can train it out. You will have to train it to go along the ground, like pull these guys out, let them go and it will train out. But it does want to bush up if you take the limbs out. Um, this guy, so the, this is the only evergreen honeysuckle. Every other honeysuckle is going to lose its leaves. This one is more semi. If we get really cold or we have a real hard frost, it will drop its leaves. If we have a mild winter, it will probably keep its leaves on. Um, this is more of a purple flower with some white in it a little bit. Not as fragrant, but still really pretty. You're getting it for the color, basically. So that's the honeysuckles. I also have a gold flame, which is an orange flower, but it will lose its leaves. So, but full sun and all that. No, they bloom for a while. So I would say if we get a warm April, they'll start in April and go all the way until about August. They finally finish blooming out right now. So they go a long time. Same for all of them. They all do that. So it's kind of cousin things are these trumpet vines. So this is the Madam, Madam Galen trumpet vine. And this is the yellow trumpet vine. I brought this one. So they flower and then they put off these pods here. It's kind of its seed pods. They really don't make a mess. You're not gonna see them a lot. I know people sometimes worry about that. Um, I've never noticed a big mess with them. So I love them for the flowers. Get in for the pods, and the birds will eventually go for the pods once they open and stuff. But um, there's a great solid plant up a trellis along the ground, full sun, drought resistant um, and bug resistant. You will get some aphids because they're just big flowers and stuff. But hummingbirds love them. Butterflies love them because they love these tube kind of flowers. So they're just a great plant to have in your yard. Yeah, yeah, they'll do that because you, you won't overwater the tree, but they'll grow up like those native pines or things. They wouldn't do it under like a normal deciduous like maple or KB, but up those hardy natives, they'll probably do better for you. It'll be fine as long as they get enough sunlight. If they don't get enough sunlight, they may not bloom as well, but they'll still crawl up and do great. Yeah. So they are resistant to that. Deer too, they don't really go for the flower and they don't like the texture of the leaves. Yes, mm -hmm. and the rabbits as well. Yeah, most of this stuff will be, surprisingly enough. Um, it's like the flowers and stuff they, they love to eat more. The last vine besides the fruits, this guy is kind of my favorite. Chocolate vine is one name, Akibia is the other. This is kind of a purple blooming variety. There are also white bloomers, which you see more often. It is a deciduous. It will go die back to the ground and then come back up. I would trim it every March or so. If you're my dad, you will butcher it in the summer and it will still come back right and he'll butcher it again in the fall. So <laughs> he loves to cut things down. Um, so it grows really, really fast. I mean, from if you cut it down, it will grow up within like three months in the season and you'll have to almost trim it back again and let it keep going. So it may die back to the ground, but it comes back instantly. We've got two and it just overtakes our, our little bench that we've got. It's a really great hardy plant. Um, Deer, deer, rabbit, javelina resistant. They don't really touch this guy. Uh, kibia or chocolate vine. Yeah. I have seen, if you guys know what cutter bees are, those little, I think black or, they're cutter bees. They'll make those half circles in your leaves. They tend to like the kibia and the honeysuckles for that. They love their leaves because they're soft. So they just use it to make nests. They don't hurt your plant. They just create half moons. Some people don't like it. But it helps nature, helps those guys create a home. So just look out for that with them, but it will not kill your plant at all. So this does take a little bit more water because it grows so fast. Probably looking at three times a week or so 
once it's established, maybe twice, depends on how, what our summer's like. If it's this summer, maybe a little bit more water. It's been real hot. So, uh, but yeah, just grows really fast for you guys. The last climbers are just gonna be grapes, grapes, raspberries, blackberries, things like that. So this is a blackberry and then a grape. I don't have many things left, but um, I, we have these. We trellis some up and then you get some that have just so many different branches, they some will trail out. Um, if you've got dogs or you've got kids or anything, it may not be best because it will take over the ground and they've got thorns on them. So just be careful. Definitely easy to trail up. That's what we do. And then you just cut off the old bark, the old limbs each year, let new limbs come up. My dad marks it with bird tape. I mark mine with string. So you just want to know which year is a new cutting or a new limb and which one's old. You want to cut off the old ones because uh, they fruit off the new, new limbs each year. So, but they're, they're great for, if you don't want neighbors or anything, you don't want to see anything, but you want some fruit, you want to eat something, these guys are great for that. Grow fast, get almost full grown within a year, everything like that. These guys are prone to spittle bug. They're kind of a white mass on your grapes. Easy to take care of, either rinse it off or get a spray. Triple action is safe um, and just spray it and it'll take care of them. So. Grapes are hardy, they do get very woody, really thick wood base, so just put it in an area where it can just take over and be happy. Don't put it in like the center of the yard. Yeah, so ours will tend to fruit out the first, second year. Um, they're pretty established and hardy. If you have like more of a thin, a uh, little whip of a stem, it will take years to get out. So we get ours kind of more grown out. Same with our raspberries and berries, all that will give fruit the first year, if not definitely the second. Not as animal resistant, if you got javelina deer and you don't want to eat your berries, do not put it out front where they can get it. You want to put it somewhere where it's protected and all that. Okay, so yeah. So I pulled two Boston Ivies. They're both different Boston Ivies or, or the same. Um, I think I just pulled it and they liked how they look, so I just grabbed two. <laughs> they do get, so I just brought it up. They do, see these are bigger leaved than these guys. They do eventually get big leaves on them. It just depends on our year. If we had more of our drought year, they're gonna come out a little smaller. If we had a great monsoon, a great winter, they're gonna come out with bigger leaves because they're happier. So they do change with our season. Do not be alarmed about that. It's just what they do. Yeah, uh, no, these guys are evergreen. The Boston's and Ivy are evergreen. Any more questions on vines before we move into covers? How often would you need to, I know we're thinking of doing the jasmine as a ground cover. Okay. How often would we need to trim it back or is it just personal preference on maintaining its size? Yeah. So it's kind of a personal preference because it's an evergreen, you don't really need to trim it back. It will kind of do its own thing. But if you've got a weird trailer or you don't want it to go that way, just snip it off. It's very hardy in pruning, so it won't really hurt it. Yeah. I just ripped mine to pieces and because I didn't like how it was growing and it came back fine. So they do great. Grasshoppers do tend to go for these. So just either put it in a place where you can control that, spray for it. Um, or keep an eye on it. If you don't have many grasshoppers, that's great. You don't have to worry about it. So, yeah. Okay, ground covers. I know people don't like these guys, but this is a juniper. This is a buffalo juniper. The thing that's great about these guys is they are great for erosion control. You live on a hill and it's just slanted. This will take care of you from sliding down that hill. It will cover that. Um, and just create a great mound for you. If you've got a rock lawn and it's just hot and you're tired of the heat, but you don't want to take away all that rock, this will cover that and kind of take away some of that heat for, and handle that heat. So it covers it with shade. It can handle the rebound heat and be fine. Won't get brown spots or anything like that. So these are just hardy for it. I know they get pollen and stuff. These guys really don't do too much. It's more the tree form junipers that give off a lot of pollen. Um, but this is just a saw plant. If you want to throw it in, never have to worry about it. Never have to trim it. Take care of it. They take care of themselves. Deer, javelina, rabbit resistant. 
Sometimes, again, they will get the spider mite in them. This past year was really bad for the spider mite in these guys. If you see that webbing at all, just spray for it right away, and you won't have to worry about any browning or things like that. So just keep an eye on it. Very drought tolerant, probably once a week until it gets established, and then from there, let the earth take care of it for you. Yeah, you'll probably get a foot or two a year. Um, I think it gets like eight feet tall, so give it three years and it will be full grown. And then just get thicker from there and stuff. Uh, this is about as tall as it gets, maybe a, like a couple inches taller, but this is it. This is almost full grown, it just needs to go out. Yeah, most of my stuff is almost full grown in terms of height with my crawlers. It just needs to go wide. Let's stay within that family and let's do the rest of them. So this guy is a dwarf, dwarf Japanese garden juniper. So this is as tall as it gets, and it just spreads out about eight feet. Uh, full sun, drought tolerant, everything else is just a little bit different look. So again, great for a controller if you don't want to get it as tall as that guy. More uniform. The same one as this guy. If you don't want green, you want some more color in your yard. A lot of people like the blues. This is a blue chip juniper. It's one of the few blue ones that we get. Um, again, a foot or two a year in all these guys because they just love our area. They'll grow fast. Uh, full sun with this one. Very drought tolerant. As you can tell, sometimes we water too much in the center and it starts dying out. So you want to just put your emitters right underneath. Make sure no water gets on top. If it's rain, rain is fine. Rain will not take it out. So see that kind of hole starting? That's top watering. It's partially because our water is so alkaline here. It's so salty. It just kills out things that it touches every day. So if you're watering from your hose or anything, make sure you really get it underneath. But again, once a week till it's established, then let the rain and the earth take care of it for you. You don't have to worry about it. No trim back, nothing like that. Sometimes spider mite, just keep an eye on it. No aphids, nothing like anything else will take it out. There's lots more junipers. There's a ton of different varieties. You just gotta kind of choose what you like. For anything blue, a tidbit, sometimes in the, in the winter it will go back to green. It will lose its blue color. Just throw down some soil sulfur in the fall and it will get it to go back to green or blue by next year. So it'll kind of help it stay blue. That's just our water changing the color on these guys. Soil sulfur or aluminum sulfate will both change it back. So just, just put that on any, anything blue. Uh, same with hydrangeas. They will change your color back to blue on hydrangeas. Both those products. It's just something to throw out. Okay, companion plants. So these are all kind of within the same family. This is a Massachusetts Kinnikinnik. Kind of a... Um, oh, I lost the name. I'll figure it out. Um, but kind of that, uh, that red stem... You don't really see it a whole lot, but this grows super fast, very drought tolerant. Gets one feet by 15 feet. So this one plant will get huge for you. You do not need to keep it on a meter once it's established. It'll take care of itself. Not bug resistant, animal resistant, all of that. Full sun, partial sun. It's great to just fill up an area for you that you do not want to worry about. It does help with erosion control as well because it kind of just roots as it spreads out. It's not just one single thing. Um, so it's just a solid plant. It doesn't really get flowers or anything. Maybe some little white ones. You're never going to notice them. You're just getting it to cover the area. If you want a bit of difference in here, these all take about the same amount of water. And I'll get to that in a sec. This is a cotoneaster or cotton easter. However you want to say it, no way is wrong. These guys both get little red berries in the fall. These kind of have some. You can't really see it. You'll, you can walk up here and see it later. Uh, white flowers in the spring, berries in the fall. Birds will eat the berries, no problem. They love them. Uh, this, guys, that's as tall as it gets, and it spreads out to 96 inches. I don't know why they don't put feet on there. I'm going to go with six to eight feet here. Full sun, shade, however you want to do it. This guy's just a little bit taller, a little bit more weird. This gets two by six, so a pretty big bush. I like to do, like, one in the back, the short one in the front, so I don't have to change my water schedule, but I can get some height differentiation. This goes great over rocks if you've got like mounds or things. Because they don't have a huge root system, 
you can kind of put them in somewhere small and they'll just crawl over and cover that rock or those rocks that you don't want to see very much of. Again, if you have a rock garden, this will do great in there and take that heat from those rocks. They'll be perfectly fine. So she may have those red rocks. They throw off a lot more heat than the purples or anything. You might consider some of these stuff that can handle that heat. Flowers tend to not do well in rock gardens, just like the perennials, because they, they tend to burn. So just know what you're putting in your rock gardens. So, oh, sorry, these are, this is the Coral Beauty. This is the oldest kind of Cotoneaster you can find. So just, just great. This is the Streeves Findling. I'll show this the name. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so companion plants, the ones I consider just they can grow together, they take the same amount of water, so you do not have to change your water schedule up. So they just all take the same environments. That's why I like them as companions. After established, maybe once a week, if not twice a month during some seasons. Summer, probably once a month, if that. If you get a lot of rain or monsoon, you do not even have to turn your system on. They'll be fine. They're very drought tolerant. So that's kind of that family. Stick with the natives and I'll go into my softer perennials, a softer look, because these are all very harsh. This one is a creeping Mahonia. So we have upright and we've got creeping. This guy you see everywhere under pines, out in the forest, they just take over. Um, great for partial sun, indirect lights, full sun, they take everything. No animals eat them, nothing touches them, no bugs, anything like that. They get a really pretty, we can't really see it on here, but a really pretty yellow flower on them. So there's just kind of a cluster flower. So the, and they'll just take over from like May to August, they'll bloom. So they're a very long bloomer. They get some berries on them, not very much. You're getting them more for the color. They turn, they're starting to turn this purple color in the fall. I don't know if you guys can see that purple compared to the green. So just a different color in the fall compared to summer. So they do change for you. Evergreen, they will not lose their leaves. Um, and in the ground, they are really glossy. They get really pretty glossy color to them. They do not like being in buckets. So people don't like the look of them, but when you get in the ground, they're just so pretty. They do great for you guys. So don't compare them to what's in the bucket. Uh, again, once it's established, you're probably leaving it alone, taking it off your system, letting it do its thing. You might just have to occasionally water if we get a really hot summer like we did and a really dry winter, which we didn't. Um, it might need some, but it, it takes care of itself. Okay, I'll do some shade covers. I think this is all I have. It's more like, but this guy is one of your main ones. You see this everywhere. This is a periwinkle or a vinca minor. This is not the regular blue, um, pink, red flowered vinca. This is the only color it does. Takes over an area, I think it gets like 10 to 12, if not 15 feet wide. That's as tall as it gets. Shade though. It can do some partial sun, filtered light, but it cannot handle that full afternoon sun. Um, but it's evergreen, nothing touches it, nothing eats it. It just does this, it just fills an area. Um, if you travel this neighborhood, they have tons of it everywhere. It's almost a native. It takes over out in the wild, does that. So this is just a great shade plant. Oh, the, yeah, I already said the name. This one, a little bit different look. This is a dense spreading yew, Japanese yew, anything like that. They get red berries in the fall, but this guy gets a little bit taller. It's a well, two and a half feet by eight to 10 feet. So it's more of a shrub grow out, full shade. This cannot handle full afternoon sun. It can do morning sun, late evening sun. It cannot do the afternoon. Uh, grows probably a foot or two a year, so it goes pretty fast, but it is more water. It likes more water. So you're probably watering once or twice a week about with that good drink. So sometimes they get spider mite. Ours really hasn't gotten it this year, but ours is more of an upright. Um, so sometimes it's a spider mite. Other than that, it doesn't get any bugs. It takes care of itself. Um, but just a softer, weird looking plant. I like it to put this under, under it for this guy. So that way you can just get some differentials in there. So that's my shade stuff. Now we'll just go into full sun. So this guy, 
is a creeping germander. There's upright and there's creeping. There's a gray version, there's a green version. Um, I didn't have any of the greens. I think I had two left, so I didn't bring them up. Um, it looks a little bit, the green is more clustered. This is more sparse and open. This guy gets about three to four feet wide. It's not as wide as some covers, but it is evergreen, full sun, nothing eats it. And it does these little purple flowers from May all the way until probably October until we get cold. Um, I guess it will go longer this year because we're warmer this year. Uh, but this is just a solid plant. Um, won't lose its gray color. It'll stay gray, so you don't need to worry about feeding it or anything with the soil sulfur or whatever. Um, but yeah, this is as tall as it gets and just spreads out. So it is almost full grown, just needs to grow out. So this is a creeping germander. You're probably watering that like once a week. Do not overwater it. It will die instantly on you. So just let it go dry before you water it again. Same with these guys. These are both drought tolerant. You probably know this one. This one's yarrow. This is the, I believe the red, the red yarrow. There's red, purple. They came out with this year and yellow. Yellow is the main one. Uh, this is kind of as tall as it gets. The flowers might get a little bit taller, but it spreads out to about two feet. So it's a cover, but it's not super wide. It's more to fill in spaces in your garden. It can reseed itself. Doesn't do it very often, but it can. Depends on how many birds you got there. Um, uh, once a week, maybe twice a week watering, kind of leave it alone. It does not like to stay wet. Let it do its thing. No bugs touch it, no animals. Very drought resistant and animal resistant. Same with this guy. This is a primrose. This is that pink flower you see in the summer. They just started blooming out, so they're about done right now. This is what's left over, but I brought it because it seeds everywhere. If it's kind of invasive, so if you have an area you don't want to worry about, chuck it in there. Do not put it in your flower bed or anything if you do not want it to take over, because it will. Um, this is kind of as big as it gets, maybe a little bit bigger, but once they seed up everywhere, they'll become like a pool of primrose. They'll, they'll just take over. So we have it in our backyard just to fill some spaces, but it's not overtaking it too much, but we do have to control it. We have to rip it out, cut it back, all of that. But it's just a great hardy plant for here. Full sun, all of that, even shade. I brought this guy because there's lots of different sedums. This is a sedum. I think this is the Angelonia, Angelina sedum. Lots of different varieties. I don't have much right now, but this one is great for over rocks as well. These fit into very little crevices, things that with very little dirt, they can work in and thrive in and be fine for many years. Um, they don't have a long root structure. So you don't like a large mound in your thing or you want some softness to it, throw this in and it'll be fine. You can handle that rock heat, anything like that. So this is just a solid one. Angelina. Yeah. But there's time. So these guys are more herbs. Um, I didn't have any lavender, otherwise I'd show you that. Creeping lavender. I've got this is the um, Huntington Carpet Rosemary. So this is the only one that kind of crawls along the ground. This is kind of as tall as it gets, maybe that tall, and then just crawls four to five feet. Full sun, evergreen. This one I like to plant around like fruit trees or something like that, or right near them, because when it blooms, like in April, all the way through the summer, it brings pollination for you. So it brings the bees in to pollinate your fruit trees along with this stuff. So I like to put them together so that way I know I'm getting bees to then get fruit. You don't want to go through all that effort and not get fruit. <laughs> you trim it, you take care of it. We want fruit. Uh, so that's that rosemary. Once it's in, you're probably not touching it with water, maybe supplemental, but a lot of people overwater this stuff. And the same with the lavender, you can just leave them alone. Um, deer resistant, animal resistant, all that. This guy, if you don't want to do a normal lawn, grass, take care of it every year, have to worry about it. We have a time lawn. Um, this is magic carpet, so it's a little purple, pink flower. Ours does purple, because ours is a different variety. But this is tall as it gets, um, and then just circles out. It only gets about one feet wide. This is a six pack, so it will cover a good area. Um, but it's, love it for the pollination. If you want, if you have kids running over it, do not plant it, because there are bees. So just don't do that. They don't bother my dogs. My dogs walk over this, the bees leave them alone. 
it handles traffic really well. So you walk on it, run it over, it will come back, no problem. Again, huh? Oh, this is the magic carpet time. Creeping time, anything like that. They all do great here. Um, probably not drought resistant at all. It needs water, especially in the winter too, to keep it looking nice. Um, ours finally came out of it this year, but that heat just kind of stunted the growth. So, but a great alternative to lawns, if you don't want to waste your water so much on that, this doesn't take nearly as much as lawns. So that's why I thought I'd bring it. Um, especially if you don't want to do rock and you want to do something, that's a great alternative. Last thing I'll talk about is the Euonymus. These guys are not deer resistant. If you have deer, they will eat this stuff. They like it. Rabbits probably will go for it too, maybe the low stuff. Yeah, so you just, if you have any animals, don't touch this. <laughs> Backyard is great. Uh, full sun for these guys. They can use some shade if you need. Lots of different varieties. Most of them are green with yellow. There's very few that are just straight green or just straight yellow. So. These guys are the emerald and gold winter creeper. And this is the emerald and gold, oh, the same plant. I got, they look different, right? The same plant. <laughs> well, they look different to me. This one's more variegated, I'd say, than this one. Again, you keep them fertilized, it will keep their variegation up. They do kind of want to revert back sometimes. Depends on how wet our winter was. More, more fertilizer will keep it variegated. Um, you can trim these back if you don't like these little tops that they have. They can handle trimming no problem. Pack it back. It will do fine. These all get two by five. That's what most of them be, two by five. Um, and just probably moderate watering. About once or twice a week or so consistently. So they do need some water. I got lots of other euonymus that are more upright. Everything, they're very common here. Which is not for animals. So if you're in the mountains at all, don't even touch it. <laughs> Unless you're in the backyard. Um, I wanted to bring... Any, any questions on my plants here or anything? Okay. So I brought this up. We're having a fall to-do class a little bit later. But now is a really great time to throw down humic. So if you have lawns or anything or low growers, this is a product that doesn't fertilize your plants. It gets your ground alive. feeds your ground. Uh, the mycorrhizal colonies, this just makes them explode, brings by earthworms, helps them kind of get going. So this is great for your ground. It feeds your ground so plants can uptake it, that nutrients, and put it back into the leaves. So it's about the time to do this. You only need to do it once a year. I find the fall is the best time. You can do it in the spring as well. doesn't matter. You can't really overuse this because it's not a fertilizer. So you can definitely do it more than once a year. If you want, if you find that you're, if you have really rocky soil, this tends to, with the rain, tends to wash it out some. Just replace this more often, you'll be fine. So it's humix. The so soil activator is the other name. The other thing, so this is the fertilizer for your plants. This is a fertilizer. This is our seven fold for all purpose. If you've been here a while, you know all about it. This is our main product we sell because we make it for this area, the surrounding area, Dewey, Williamson Valley, Skull Valley, all those guys. This is great stuff. Um, it's, it's all natural, so it's not organic, but it's all natural because of the minerals. A 744, so you really can't burn your plants with it. It's not that 10, 10, 10 that you have to be careful about. Uh, it's more natural. So you throw it in, water it in lightly, and let it do its thing. It works over a three to four month period. So you have to do it kind of three times a year. We say Halloween, New Year's, 4th of July, and Easter if you want, or skip New Year's, do Easter. At least do it twice a year. Our soil sucks so much here, and our nutrients run out so fast. You need to keep up on this stuff. If you want your plants to stay consistent, they don't have to change their size very much, get this guy down at least twice a year, and you won't have to worry so much about your plants staying small, or they get big one year and they stayed small the other year. This just keeps things consistent for you. Um, so the 74 for all purpose. Yeah, just it's for anything and everything. It doesn't matter what it is, you can put it on it. Fruits, veggies, it's safe for your um, veggies and stuff like that. So you won't get into the fruit. You can just sprinkle it on top and water it. It is pellets, so it takes a while to break down. So if you don't want that on your rocks or anything, 
try and dig it in a little bit. Um, if you have that weed fabric, it's not plastic and it's actual weed fabric, this will go right through it. Just water it in, it will go right through it. You have the plastic, you are gonna have to dig it in because it will not go through that plastic. So get it close to that plant and get it watered in. So there shouldn't be too much plastic anymore, but there is some out there. The last thing I have, and this is because the season's coming up, I like to remind people to get this before we get cold. Uh, this is frost cloth. It's kind of 50 by 50, 12 by 10. I have bigger ones. Um, it's great to cover anything that's kind of more, doesn't handle the colds, so like agaves, cactuses, unless it's like a prickly pear, that can be fine. But stuff that tends to like falter, or you just want to keep it looking nice. Whenever we get hard freezes, this is more like January, maybe December, you throw this over your plants and it will just kind of insulate them and keep them green for a little bit longer, keep them healthy. The other thing is if we're getting a snowstorm or something, just water your plant really heavy and it will help it get through. It kind of creates its own little ecosystem and its leaves and stuff. When you water it, it takes it up and keeps it from freezing. It's like an antifreeze for plants. So just brought it up. It's good to have on hand before the season hits. You don't have to go out in a snowstorm and buy this and have to worry about it. So I just thought I'd bring that up. Yeah. Yeah, water will just always help your plants and then throw this on top. Mm -hmm. So usually you just keep it on overnight or when that snowstorm is and then you take it off. Because it breathes, but you still want that sun, if we have a good Sunday, to go through that and get your plant healthy. They still need that sun. They still need the air. But it just helps get rid of that, some of that snow from sitting on it. Yeah, plus it's ugly. Yeah, you don't want You paid all that money for your plants. You don't want it on there. So it just kind of keeps things nice, mostly for your cactus and agaves. But for anything else you want to keep nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Duh. This is important. <laughs> So this is a powder. You mix in with your water, your gallon water. It has a scoop in here, or it should. Um, and it's 1248 8. So that 48 gets things to bloom. It gets it to bloom bigger, longer. Um, so like for your fruit trees and stuff, anything that blooms, this will help. Um, yeah, yeah, it's just solid. So there's a lot in here, but you use it for everything. So you need this much. I don't have anything smaller. But this will get you through many years, if not one year at least, depending on what you have. So anything that blooms. Um, a lot of this stuff doesn't really bloom, but like your, your uh, blackberries and stuff, when they do bloom, it just helps them to stay on longer so those bees can get there and get your fruit. So that's my products. I got everything. Let me see what time it is. 45 minutes. We're perfect. Look at me. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. So because it's high numbers, I'd probably use it. It tells you how much for each plant, but no more than like once or twice a month. You can burn your plants. I burned my lilac with it. It has taken two or three years to come back. So just, just be careful with it. If you follow directions, you will have no problem. Yeah. Anything else, you guys? Well, so no, no. So they, if you train them up, they will kind of go and determine it, most maybe six feet, but then they climb, it's undefined. They'll just go. Yeah, so these are, they just start crawling, crawling over once they get past a point, but no, they'll keep growing, no problem. It's just the low growth. These guys are all major height, and then they grow out. So on that, you're going to put a half year to grow, No, yeah, you can take it off. Now, if we have a really hot summer, or we were cool, and we got instantly hot, like we did this year, you might give it something just to power through that heat stroke, but then it'll be fine. So take it off, but maybe supplemental. Depends on the year. So yeah, they do great. Yeah, yeah, they can handle full shade, no problem. They're probably the best thing for that. Um, still need a water, but not as much. Maybe once a week. Depends on how your soil is. If not twice. Yeah, full full shade, no problem. All right, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Thanks for dealing with me. <laughs> Glad you came to class. Stop this live here. Oh, Virginia creepers are deciduous. Let me just. Yeah, 
Okay. Um, first of all, what does it cost to have somebody come and look at your yard and, and give you like some ideas? I have a brand new fence. There's almost nothing there because when it was down, the probably came in and what little I had. Yeah, they I took had, out. I lost it.